everyone and welcome back to my channel this is yummy brown of yummy crochetology and today's tutorial is this cheeky cute and easy to make granny square shrug it is perfect for any garments that you have in your wardrobe either you will use it as a cover-up for a bikini or you can use it as a layer with your dresses or tops it's fabulous and you can style it anything you like this shrug will also comes with a written pattern version if you are interested of that please check the description box below for the link where to get the written pattern also this is a sponsored video we have a superstar yarn featured in this video from darn good yarn if you are interested to check out more of their yarns please head to my description box below for the link and if you like my content that talks about crochet and styling our crochet pieces, please smash that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Let's get started. So this is the superstar yarn of this video. It is from Darn Good Yarn. They are too kind to send this yarn to me. Thank you so much. This is the card or the detail that you have along with the yarn. This is a medium white yarn and it is 100% recycled silk. Okay, so this is sustainable kind of yarn. It smells good and it is so beautiful. This is the shade that I have. It's the Rising Phoenix and it's the shades of orange and reddish. And also, I have scraps yarn here. You can definitely pick whatever color or whatever yarn you have at home. And these are the materials that needed. You also need 5 of 50 gram silk wool yarn for the sleeves. So first off is we will start with the granny squares. I have five rows to make up the granny squares. I constantly change color in each row. You can also do that or you can also use one color. It's really up to you. But in my case, I change color every row. So we will start with a slip knot. However you do a slip knot, please do that. And this is how I make my slip knot. And I pull the tail and tighten that. Now you have to start with a chain of five. Then slip stitch to your first chain of your chain five to make a circle. You can also start with magic circle if you are comfortable with magic circle. Now chain three and make a double crochet next to your chain three to make into a V stitch okay so your chain three here is count as a stitch and this is your first V stitch okay and again you have to make another V stitch which is double crochet chain one and double crochet again into the circle to complete the V stitch so at the moment you have two V stitch again the chain three at the beginning is count as a stitch and you have to make eight of that so at the moment we're making the third so continue your double crochet chain one and double crochet until you completed the eight V stitches okay so your first row is composed of eight V stitches So I'm here at the end and make sure you have 8 V stitches. So I'm making the last V stitch which is double crochet, chain 1 and double crochet. And then we will slip stitch to our chain 3. So this is our first row. So now we will proceed to our next row. You have to attach your second color if you are changing colors into the chain two spaces from the previous round so we will be working into the chain spaces in this round secure your yarn and make a chain of three okay this chain three is considered or count as a stitch then make a three double crochet together in the same chain space so three double crochet together is a double crochet half way finish so there's one now another double crochet halfway finish and this is the third double crochet halfway finish to make it into four double crochet together pull a yarn and make a chain of three 
Okay, so that's your first cluster and your chain three here is considered as a stitch. Now move to the second chain space and make four double crochet together. Again, four double crochet together is halfway finished double crochet. So that's two, three, and then four. So you have four unfinished double crochet and then pull a yarn and chain of three. So that's how we will make a four double crochet together. And you have to work into the chain spaces until you have eight clusters in your reach to here. So I have here eight clusters and I'm about to finish my eight double crochet together. And again, ending this row with a chain of three and slip stitch to the topmost of your first cluster. Okay, so you should have eight clusters in total of double crochet together. You can cut off your yarn if you're changing color. And this time we will again attach our next color into the chain spaces. This time we have three chain spaces and secure that yarn and make a chain of two. So that's one and two. Okay, so start your row with chain two. Again, it is considered as a stitch. In this time, chain two here is supposedly a half double crochet. Okay, and in the same chain space, you have to make three double crochet. So that's one, two, and three. Okay, and in the same chain space, you have to make half double crochet. Okay, and that is to complete the petal. First petal here. Again, your chain two is considered as a stitch or a half double crochet. Now move to the next chain space of three and make a half double crochet in there. Okay, and then another three double crochet in the same chain space. So that's one and two and three and another half double crochet in the same chain space to complete your petal. You should have two petals right now and it's composed of half double crochet, three double crochet and half double crochet. Repeat that around. So I'm here at the end and I'm ending this row with a slip stitch to your chain two at the beginning to close it. Row three is complete. Now we will be working in between the petals. This part here, that's where you will insert your stitches or hook. Insert your yarn here and secure that. Make a chain of two. Again, that's considered as a stitch or a half double crochet. And another chain of five. One, two, three, four, and five. Again, your chain two is a half double crochet or considered as a stitch. And then go to the space between these two petal and make the corner. Corner here is double crochet. Okay. Chain of five. One, two, three, four, and five. And again, another double crochet in the same space or stitch, which is between these two petals. And that is your first corner. Okay, so your corner is composed of double crochet, chain five, and a double crochet. Again, chain of five. Go to the space between the two petals and make a half double crochet. Okay, so there you go. Another chain of five. And make the corner, which is a double crochet chain five and another double crochet in the same space okay so you have to repeat that pattern of corner chain five and your half double crochet until you completed the four corners of your granny squares so 
So we're here at the end and we have to slip stitch into the top of your chain 2 at the beginning of this row to close your row. So for some reason I deleted a clip to this part where we will attach the last row. So I have to refilm it but it's the same pattern. So you have to attach your new color into the chain spaces. Secure that yarn and pull a yarn. This time chain of two. That is again considered as a stitch or a half double crochet. And then make half double crochet into your chain five space. Again, your chain two is considered as a stitch. So that's two half double crochet, three and four. In total, you have five stitches, including your chain two at the beginning. Now chain of one on top of a stitch. Okay, you have to chain one if it's a stitch. And if it's a chain, you have to copy how many chains are there. So if it's a chain five, you have to make five half double crochet into that chain five. Okay, so there's our five half double crochet in the chain space of five. Now make a chain of one since this is a stitch. Another five half double crochet into the chain space of five. Okay, so that's how our pattern goes. Okay, so you have to repeat that around. Just copy how many chains you have in the previous round and put the chain on top of a stitch. So repeat around your granny squares. So now we're here at the end and I will have to have my first, I mean my last half double crochet and end this row with a slip stitch to the chain 2 at the beginning and we can cut off this yarn. Again, I suggest to block the granny squares. This is not joined as you go so you can definitely block your granny squares while making the other granny squares but this is just my recommendation, it's, not, it's just an optional steps. And then you have to make at least 5 to 6 granny squares or enough to wrap around your bust area. And also this is how we will connect the granny squares using 3mm hooks. So we size down and facing the right side together like so. We will be attaching the granny squares at the back. And I'm using the same yarn as my last row. You can definitely use a different color if you want to. And attach your yarn in the first corner of your granny squares. And then pull a yarn, secure that yarn and make a chain. And then two single crochets in the corner. Okay, so we will put two single crochets in the corner of your granny squares and then we will align our granny squares like this. Make sure that two stitches of the two granny squares are aligned because we are going to use that. And we're using all the loop of the stitches. Okay, so as you can see, I'm using all the loop of this granny squares stitch and so is this second one and I will make a single crochet. Okay, so we're using a single crochet method here, um, all loop. Okay, so just make sure that you've managed to grab or insert your hook all loop of your granny squares stitches. So continue your single crochet in, in every stitches across this side of your granny squares. Okay, and do not forget that we are facing the wrong side. And try to bury the tail or unnecessary yarn along the way or inside your stitches just to minimize our waving at the end of the project. So again, continue your single crochet across in the side of your granny squares. Yeah. 
So we reach at the end of our granny squares or the corner and we will single crochet two times in this last stitch. Okay, so you can cut off this yarn now and this is how our connect connecting two granny squares look like. Okay, so you have to repeat the pattern of single crochet facing the wrong side in every granny squares you have to form a bandeau or a panel. Okay, so in my case, I roughly five squares for small size. So if you are in bigger size, you have to add more granny squares. If you are smaller size, you just have to use at least um, one square less than this tutorial. Okay, and I'll meet you at the end of your bandeau step. So now that we have attached all our granny squares to form a panel, we will add borders to our panels. We will change color every row or you can stick to one color. It's really up to you. But in this tutorial, I will change color every row. I will start with the featured yarn, which is this sparkle yarn, the Rising Phoenix. You can definitely check my description box below for the link where to get this one and attach your yarn in the corner of your panel, secure that yarn and then insert your hook there and make a chain of one. Okay. And then in the same stitch, you have to make a single crochet. And then the next stitch, another single crochet. Okay. And then on your next stitch, you have to make a double crochet. So double crochet this time. Single crochet after that. Then double crochet again after your single crochet. So it is the hounds to using the hounds to stitch for our borders. So it's an alternate of single crochet, double crochet, and a round. Okay, so our work this time is in rounds. You're not turning, but instead you're in rounds. Continue your hounds to or single crochet, double crochet from here where we started all the way to the other panel and when you reach in the first corner or every corner you have to put two single crochet and then regular houndstooth and then two single crochet in this corner and then regular houndstooth and another two single crochet in this corner and then regular houndstooth until you are back up where you started I'm here at the end and I'm finishing my stitches with a double crochet and a slip stitch to my first stitch. So that's our first row of the hound's tooth and then you can repeat this four times or three times and changing color every time you um, make another row. Okay, so I'm alternating the sparkle rising phoenix yarn and the white one. Okay. So again, the same pattern of hound's tooth, but this different color. I am here at the very last stitch of my very last row, which is the fourth row of my hound's tooth for the borders. And I have white yarn here. Again, I just used two colors for my borders, which is a hound's tooth. And slip stitch to your first chain. This is what it looks like. If you want it thicker or more coverage in your um, breast area, you have to add more rows. Now we will add a borders in the opening panel and the corset um, closure. So again, continue with the same yarn, chain one, and then turn your work single crochet in every stitches. We're making the borders here for the closure or the corset part. So we will start off with a single crochet row. Now I'm here at the end of this row and this is what your single crochet row looks like. Again, chain one and single crochet in your previous single crochet rows. So this is our second row of single crochet for the closure for the corset. I'm here at the end and this is the second row of our single crochet row. 
Now we will start off the the holes for your corset. So a chain of five. Okay, turn your work. This chain five is considered as a stitch or it is count as a stitch or this is your first hole. Now skip two stitches and slip stitch into the next stitch. So there you go. That's the first hole for our corset closure. Again, chain of five, skip two and slip stitch to the next stitch. So repeat the pattern of chain five skip two and slip stitch to the next stitch until you have at least eight holes okay so i have here eight holes total this is my last um, hole so chain five again and skip this last two stitches and slip stitch in this very end and cut off your yarn okay so this is how big the holes and you have to repeat that borders and closure holes in the other side Okay. And now we can attach our ribbon or a chain of 150. It's up to you what you will use for your corsets and put a darning needle each end of your ribbon and lace them down in front of those holes or in the holes to use as a closure. Okay. So lace them down using the darning needle and you can either crochet your chain of 150 or use a ribbon. And this is what it looks like at the end okay and now we will put the sleeves i put the stitch markers into where i want my sleeves and i just put it right above this stitch okay and at the back i use the borders of the center granny squares attach your yarn where your stitch markers are and you can use different color or any color you want and chain of 55 for small size please add two to five chain if you're making a bigger size this is my 55 chain and we will slip stitch this to the back of your panel to form a sleeves so now we have the sleeve as the foundation now we will slip stitch in this side of your sleeves in order for us to go into this direction okay so make sure your slip stitch will be in this side slip stitch to the next stitch where you slip stitch at the previous round this slip stitch will serve as your turning chain for the next row okay and then turn your work and we will single crochet in the next 10 stitches okay so we will single crochet in the next 10 stitches so that's one two three four and so on okay until you have 10 single crochets into your sleeves once you already have 10 single crochet or established 10 single crochet Remove your three millimeter hook and go to the tiniest hook you could find in your stash and use that to get a pearl, a beads, or anything that you want to attach into your sleeves. In my case, a pearl. And I will use this tiny hook to grab this yarn here and pull it through inside the pearl. Okay, hence we really need a tiny size hook once you have your pearl inside or attached to the sleeves yarn go back to your three millimeter hook and continue your rows of single crochet again you need 10 single crochets before you will attach another pearl okay so the pattern goes 10 single crochet and pearl okay so you have to repeat that until you reach at the end of your sleeves now I'm here at the end and I will end this with a single crochet and again a slip stitch to the panel itself. Okay, so every row has to be ended with a slip stitch to the panel. Before you will slip stitch, make sure your sleeves is not twisted. Okay, so now we have the sleeves of pearl. How pretty is that? 
Now we will move to our next row, a chain of two. This time you have to be very careful where you're going. Make sure your stitches are right side facing or facing towards you. Okay, the same way as you make the other sleeves. The direction may be different, but just make sure the stitches is facing towards you. So chain two, and I will double crochet in every stitches towards my sleeves, not the armpit, unless you're making the other side sleeves. Okay, just bear in mind that you're, when you're making this row, your stitches should be facing towards you. And also include the stitches where the purl is, put a double crochet in there since this row involves double crochet in every stitches, okay? So you have to put double crochet in every stitches from here in these sleeves all the way to your armpit. Your work will be in rounds, okay? We are here at the end and we will slip stitch to our chain two at the beginning of this row. Okay, so that is the first row for our sleeves, the long sleeves, okay, the double crochet row. Now, chain of four, so that's four, chain one here is count as a stitch, skip one and double crochet into the next. So we have here a square stitch. Chain one again, skip one, and double crochet next. So we're making a square stitches here. Chain one again, skip one, and double crochet next. Okay, chain one, skip one, and double crochet again into the next. So you have to repeat that chain one, skip one, and double crochet into the next stitch pattern around okay again our works will be in rounds now until we reach here so we're here at the end and I have two stitches left so we will make our chain of one and then skip these two stitches and then slip stitch to your chain three okay we only slip stitch to the th chain three so this is the second row of our long sleeve. Now chain of four. And this time we will use a different pattern. We have to put a front post double crochet into this post. So front post double crochet is wrap your yarn and insert your hook into the post around the post, not on the top, but around and make a double crochet. Okay, oops. So this is your front post double crochet. Chain one and in the next stitch, regular double crochet. Okay, so that's how our pattern goes for this row. Chain one, front post double crochet. Chain one and double crochet on top of the double crochet from the previous round. Okay. So you can see the front post double crochet is a little bit protruding compared to the other one. Chain one again and front post double crochet. Okay, so again, do not forget front post double crochet is when you wrapped your stitches around the post instead of inserting your hook on top of the stitch. Again, repeat this pattern around until you reach here. I'm here at the end and I have here a few stitches so I end up with a front post double crochet and chain one and this time we will make a double crochet on top of this stitch and chain one and slip stitch into the third chain of your chain four okay there you go we already established our stitches for the sleeves again chain of four is the fourth row and since this is a front post double crochet from the previous round you have to make a front post double crochet into that stitch so basically we'll just copy the previous row stitches chain one and double crochet on top of the double crochet from the previous round okay 
So it's just copying chain one, front post double crochet into the front post double crochet, chain one and double crochet into the top of double crochet, chain one and front post into the front post double crochet of the previous round. Okay, so you will just copy the previous rows stitches. Okay, so you have to repeat the front post double crochet, chain one and double crochet pattern again in rounds until you reach here where you started. And you have to keep repeating that fourth row of our long sleeve pattern until you have long enough. Okay, you have to have a rows and rows until long enough to reach into your wrist area. Okay, I don't need much because I'm a bit tiny, but if you need longer, just add more rows. We are here at the end and I'm ending this row with a slip stitch. And this is what it looks like right now. It is beautiful textured sleeves and mine measures around 15 inches. So if you need longer, please add more rows before we will proceed to our cuff. Now we are going to add the cuff and we will size down first in 2.20 millimeter hook, chain one and single crochet in every stitches. Okay, so every stitches you have to make a single crochet. I'm here at the end and we will end this row with a single crochet and slip stitch to our chain one. Okay, this is what it looks like. Now move back to your three millimeter hook and this time we will add the cuff or the flaring, chain four and in the same stitch where your chain is make a double crochet. This chain four is considered as a stitch or we're making the first V stitch here. Okay, now on the next stitch make a V stitch which is double crochet chain one and double crochet again in the same stitch. So there's your two V's now since the chain four is count as a stitch. V stitch next means double crochet, chain one and double crochet again into the same stitch. So we have three V stitches right now. So you have to keep repeating your V stitches again in rounds until you reach here. So we are making the last V stitch of our cuff and chain one and double crochet in the same stitch. And then we will ending this row with a slip stitch. Okay, so this is the second row for the cuff. And now, if you, if you stretch your stitches like this, you will see the chain one space from the previous round. Slip stitch into that first chain space and make a chain of four, okay? And in the same chain space, you have to make two double crochet form a cluster. Okay, so there's your first cluster. Again, go into your chain space and work a cluster in there. The cluster composed of three double crochets in the same chain one space. Okay, so there you go. And you have to make another clusters in every chain one space from the previous round. You will be able to see the chain one space when you stretch your stitch like this. So cluster means three double crochet in the same chain one space and you have to repeat your cluster stitches from here again in rounds until you reach here. Now I'm making my last cluster for my cuff and again clusters is three double crochet in the same chain space then end this row with a slip stitch to your chain four. Now we're done with the sleeves and it is very beautiful. You can definitely wear it anywhere you want. And I have here a little um, detail that I added for the last minute. I have a leftover of a sparkle 
rising phoenix yarn and you have to make a chain of 90 to 120 it depends how long you want your chain and then again attach a darning needle each end of the chain and lace them down so between this um, crisscrossing there are three stitches that i use as spacing lace them down until they reach the bottom so now we're done with our beautiful shrug that is so pretty the yarn use is so pretty the color and it's absolutely a stunning piece that you can definitely wear everywhere use it as a bikini cover up or a layer to your dresses during this cold season so definitely style it your way and don't forget to tag me in my social media you can find me here and also this will come in a written pattern if you prefer a written pattern version so you will not be stuck with the tutorial you can definitely grab a copy of the written pattern just go to my description box below for the link if you like my content that talks about styling and crocheting please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up a stickers or comment below if you have some questions and that's all for today I hope to see you again sometime next week goodbye it's late at night and I hear footsteps on the floor Blood is freezing in my limbs What is it really?